So what do you do if you have a, a, an 8902A, but you don't have the 11722A sensor? Now the 11722A sensor is a combined power and frequency sensor. Basically it plugs into the power sensor and the frequency slots on the 8902A and then will select back and forth. Well what you can do is you can build your own. So let's take a look at uh, what we need to do that. Here is the relevant section out of the, the manual. Let me zoom in a bit so that uh, we can see this. And it's about building a remote control RF switch. And it goes through to describe what it is, the type of uh, uh, power sensors that you need. So you need something from the uh, 8480 series of uh, sensors. You need a switch. Uh, and the switch needs to be capable of dealing with the power that comes out of the back. So either a, a triple three double one or an 8761A. And then there is a, a procedure that you can follow. And effectively a little diagram that shows you how the sensor works. And this is effectively exactly how the 11722A sensor works you plug in an RF signal at the front of that sensor and then the measuring receiver, this is the 8902A, this is the uh, 11722A receiver. Effectively the measuring receiver says I want to deal with power so send me through your RF power sensor and give me that power information. I want to deal with the frequency so it flicks the switch over and the device flicks over and sends across the uh, just the frequency. So we can build exactly this uh, system ourselves. Let's take a look at the components. So the first thing that you're going to need is one of these. This is a little, let me get some additional light uh, in here. This is a Hewlett Packard, let's see if we can get in there, you won't be able to see that, uh, 8761 uh, single pole double throw RF switch. And basically what uh, it does is you can take uh, uh, a voltage and you could apply it to across here and effectively what it is is two back to back Xana diodes so it creates its own positive negative uh, drop across here and a set of permanent magnets and a coil and so you give it you apply the voltage and it will lock over to one of these two um, uh, uh, connections so that's the first thing we need the next thing we need is a power sensor this power sensor here is and we can see this this is a uh, HP, this is a, 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 an 8482 power sensor and this power sensor is basically uh, a uh, 10 megahertz to 4 gigahertz uh, power sensor that will travel from uh, uh, I believe from minus 30 to plus 20 uh, dB, uh, dBm so you need one of those you need the power sensor cable. I think this is uh, Hewlett Packard number uh, HP 11730 A. Uh, oh, and in fact, it's printed right there on the cable. Um, they come in various different lengths. I happen to have this one for my power meters. And then the final thing you need is just simply a set of wires that will plug into the back of the measuring receiver and then enable you to connect to your switch. So let's go and assemble these uh, all together and try them out. Okay, there we go. You can see I have a cable coming in from my signal generator into my switch. My switch I have a connection directly to the RF uh, input and then I have my 8482A sensor 
uh, connected. Now I happen to have the, uh, uh, the measuring receiver on the floor so that we can get everything in the shot. Let me set up for that and not forgetting, let me connect in these cables and then uh, uh, we'll give it a try. Be right back. Okay, so here we are. Uh, we have the device set up. Let me push that in a little bit. You can see the power sensor is connected to the sensor input and I have the frequency uh, connected in. And so now if we turn on the, the measuring receiver. You may hear a clunk, you may not. Depending upon whether or not the, uh, which way the, the switch uh, was the last time I left it because it's held in place by permanent magnets and here you can see um, that it's saying oh you know 749.997 megahertz I have 750 on the uh, 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 the signal generator uh, it's very close it'll warm up uh, as the oven oscillator uh, let's have a look uh, you know, the, uh, the oven controlled oscillator in the device here uh, has to warm up so that uh, it's guaranteed a certain performance. And if you type in 15.0 and then hit special, it will tell you whether or not that's the case. And in error 12 here says that uh, the oven controlled oscillator isn't uh, warm enough yet. You know, so we'll keep coming back and, and trying that. But let's just clear that. And you can see the, the frequency there, and it'll eventually come good and hit uh, 750 once that warms up. So now if I hit RF power you should hear a clunk and I'm getting error 15 because that's telling me that uh, uh, we haven't set any of the uh, uh, um, any of the calibration factors uh, that would enable uh, the system to calibrate. So let me go do that and then I'll be right back. Okay, so there we go. Uh, we've put in uh, our uh, calibration factors uh, now. And so if I go back to frequency, you heard it uh, go thunk. You can see that uh, the oven's warmed up if we do 15.0. Zero tells me that the oven is uh, warmed up. And uh, we're reading 7500, uh, 750 megahertz. If I hit RF power, you'll hear it go clunk. And then now it's giving me the reading. And if I hit log lin, I can see that I'm reading about 1.46 uh, dBm. Now, this works a lot like the uh, four series uh, power meters. And that, in fact, any of the power meters. And that's, uh, you have to go in and, and zero them. So let's go in and, uh, and, and do that. So we'll go and attach. Uh, our power meter here to our calibration uh, output and then I'm going to go hit zero and we wait a bit and eventually it will come back with a zeroed value and then what we do is we hit calibrate and that turns the calibration reference on it passes through uh, it's telling me that I'm reading it and then I go blue save cal and now it's set to be 0 dBm. Now I actually measured this calibration on my uh, E4418B and this is uh, bang on uh, 1 uh, uh, bang on 0 uh, dBm so I can turn off the calibration now and then connect this back to the uh, uh, to my uh, signal generator and if it's actually I'm having a little bit of trouble getting it connected there we go and now what you're seeing is through the cable um, through this switch and into the reader I'm getting about uh, 0.72 uh, dBm loss. Now that's what I'd expect. This is uh, RG316, uh, uh, I think. 316, 174. Anyway, the, uh, uh, at 750 megahertz, the cable loss for about a meter, a bit over a meter, should be about 0.7 dB. So 
I'm roughly seeing uh, what I expect to see here. If I hit my amplitude and I step myself down to 10, you know, you're seeing that uh, we're going down and reading uh, these lower values. And uh, we're able to, to step up. If I go up to plus 10, you'll see that you know, we get uh, uh, you know, close to, to what the, uh, the actual uh, value is on that. So this is a cheap way. These things are, are, are very cheap. If you already have power meters, uh, you can get one of these switches and you can set yourself up with a, uh, uh, an ability to do a, a proper power frequency uh, measurement uh, on the 8902A uh, and not need to buy the uh, 11722A uh, sensor. Hope you found this interesting. Thanks.